Hey guys, uh, in this video we're going to cover single sample t-tests. And um, there's a couple of ways of doing this, but uh, one of which is very, very hard and um, time-consuming and unproductive. And then there's this way, which I did a little research on, and this is much easier to do. So uh, I have a qu I set up a question here. Recently, uh, School X published that the um, average GPA for the graduating class of 2009 was 3.6. And you want to ask the question, is there a significant difference between this year's GPA, and, which is represented by data set A, and then uh, with, with the GPA of the last year, right, with the class average of last year? So you have the, this year's data set here in um, data set A, and then you have the class average over here. Now, Excel doesn't actually have a single sample t-test function, but it does have two sample um, t-test functions. And so what we're doing here is by replicating the 3.6 average, which is the one we're testing for, um, against every single one of these data points, we can then see if there is a difference. We can sort of trick the trick Excel into thinking that this is a two sample t-test when we're really only comparing one sample with one average, which is why it's called a single sample, because we're really just testing this sample against a known uh, piece of data, but we're listing the data all the way over here to sort of trick it. Okay, so I'm just going to show you how this is done. You go to uh, data analysis, you find um, two sample assuming unequal variances on the bottom here. And you want to make sure you use this one and not the other uh, t-test functions. You click OK. And here you select the uh, first data set. You select the second data set, which I've already done. And um, you click the label if you selected the label, which I like personally like. And notice you can actually edit the alpha value, which is the confidence level, right? Uh, so if you read the supplementary material document, you'll know what this is talking about, or you can wiki it or whatever. But here, 0 0.05 is a confidence level of 95, 95%. So anyways, we're going to output the data nearby, click OK, and here's our t-test results. So on the top here, in this part, it just basically gives you a little bit of a description of what's going on, right? The mean, the variance, so on and so forth. This is more like descriptive statistics. On the bottom here is where the um, inferential part starts coming in. You can see that the t-stat is negative 0.874. And that number, uh, the absolute value of the t-stat, is smaller than the t critical, one tail, right? We're asking, or or, or two tail, it's the same thing. It's both smaller than uh, um, this number. Absolute value of the t stat is smaller than both one tail or two tail. And uh, in this particular question, the hypothesis is, um, well, you don't know. So you're just comparing the two dat to the, the data set with the average and saying, is there a difference? So you're looking at the two tail. Um, and you're asking, is there a difference? And so the null hypothesis that the Excel is operating under is that there is no difference. And because the uh, t statistic here is not does not exceed the t critical, and also notice that the p value here and here, right, is bigger than 0.05. Uh, you can say that the null hypothesis is affirmed. It is not statistically significant. There is no statistically significant difference between data set A and data set B. So, you know, you can say, you know, uh, this year's class average is not statistically different from last year's class average. Um, hopefully I haven't confused you too much. Um, we're going to be doing this again in the in future t-tests so you can see it more um, as we go on. You can compare uh, 
you, your own results with the answer. And uh, I wrote here that because the absolute value of the t stat is smaller than t critical, uh, because the probability that the null hypothesis is true is smaller than alpha, and we, we therefore affirm the null hypothesis, and you know, so on and so forth. So that this hopefully this gives you a good idea and I haven't confused you too much. And I'll see you in the next video on, uh, let's see, uh, paired t-tests. Okay, see you next time.